Thanks for taking the time to take the what type of challenge you and your board are facing assessment. Now let's talk, find out a little bit about your results, shall we? Hi, my name is Mark Buzan. I'm the founder of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors and president of our Executive Director Association Management Services. And over the past five years, as I've interviewed literally hundreds of board directors as well as experts in the field of nonprofit and association excellence in search for how volunteers like yourself can make a real impact without their board role burning them out, I've noticed one big issue coming up time and time again. People would say to me, Mark, I and my board colleagues are passionate about the mission of our organization, but it's so frustrating to see how we set our great plans out to get things done, but there's never enough of us to really accomplish our mission. We have trouble finding and recruiting good board members or even holding on to the ones that we have. As a result, our ideas just don't get followed up on completely at all. Now, in my work as a nonprofit consultant and a former executive director, I've seen firsthand how challenging it can be to recruit new board members, especially the right ones you really hope to have to engage with your nonprofit. Being a board uh, member of a nonprofit board is no easy task. You and your member, other members of the board have a huge responsibility of overseeing the entire functioning of the nonprofit, making sure it runs smoothly as possible, and most importantly, ensuring new board members are a right fit. For a large number of us, this ranks only behind fundraising as the biggest thorn in our side. Finding the time to recruit people is tough, not to, know, not to know, mention knowing where to look for them at all. The most common initial step in identifying potential board members starts with our current board. It's simple, we ask them to know who they know. The problem is that in many cases, within a few minutes, that discussion comes to a dead end. We hear crickets. Now we're faced with squeezing, uh, squeezing to find board members on an already packed list uh, to-do list. We see there's a Chamber of Commerce mixer uh, next week, followed by a Rotary meeting the following uh, Wednesday. Maybe I can ask my CPA if she knows somebody. I think I'll approach the guy next, door, next across the street who has a print shop. Maybe he will serve on the board and donate in-kind printing. Yay! <laughs> but let's face it, a lot of us probably daydream about having an entire group of people who are passionate about our mission, willing to open up the doors for fundraising opportunities, seasoned professionals within their industries with personal capacities to give and bring a deep and connected network to the table. We see other organizations with these rock stars and wonder, how can I get in on that action? Or if you're fortunate enough to find someone to serve on your board, maybe you're just happy enough having a warm body to fill the role in itself, regardless of whether or not they have the true aptitudes and available time to commit. If either of these situations has your head nodding in agreement saying, yeah, I can relate to that, keep watching as I think this video might just help. Each of these challenges means that either the organization's plans are never fully realized and opportunities for growth are missed. This unfortunately sets off an especially difficult, vicious circle, keeping really motivated people and mo moving them up into leadership roles on the board as they lose faith that if they put in their hard work, they'll either be left to alone or they won't be able to see the fruits of their efforts fully realized. And this is a discouraging prospect, especially for people who seek board roles as a means of their own self-fulfillment. And in my numerous discussions with nonprofit board members, they confide in me in their busy career, family, and volunteer commitments that they know that things could be better, but they're not even really sure what can be done. And that led me down the path of creating this assessment and tutorial so you can get instant clarity about the knowledge that you need and what's right for you. So with that being said, let's get to your results, shall we? Okay, looking at your results 
you are probably what's known as a mission-based type of professional or personality. For mission-based individuals like yourself, it's all about your big why. There's something that you want to achieve in the world, either with your cause or profession or your industry, and for you, board service is just one way to accomplish that. You're likely the type of person who has a strong desire to make a positive impact in the world. Now, there are other mission-based uh, professionals who have taken this exact uh, same assessment and who are changing the world by volunteering their leadership skills on the boards of charities, foundations, co-ops, and associations everywhere, such as members of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. They have learned from each other exactly just how much more rewarding their experience can be when their board becomes one actively sought out by experienced and enthusiastic professionals and community members. And in my time interviewing hundreds of nonprofit board directors from all over, one of the most common reasons they confide in me why they serve is a desire to be surrounded by people who share their passion. And as one put it, I want to be surrounded by people who are smarter than me so I can grow personally and, as a result, professionally. They've learned how to strategically seek out the best candidates that open up doors, understand governance, and in the case of charities, open up their wallets or Rolodexes. And because they attract great candidates, the board itself finds itself refocusing the efforts of board members on the interests that drove them to volunteer in the first place. A passion for cause of the cause and mission that interests them the most. Now, if you had the benefit of enough free time to make their, your volunteer board service a full-time job, or if your organization had the budget to hire an army of uh, more staff, or even if you had a lineup of people begging you to join your board, well, you probably could have a very high-performing organization in place. But from my sense is that if you already had that in, in many answers to many of your biggest questions or challenges, well, you probably wouldn't be watching this video, would you? If you're like most people who volunteer their free time on the board of directors, you can appreciate the frustration, the confusion, or even sense of helplessness that comes with when, when you feel like you've tried everything and yet you're still stuck. It can be helpful to feel uh, helpful to feel left wondering why have don't others share this passion uh, to uh, desire to step up like I do. If you've heard any of the causes that uh, uh, of, of this has been hurt, having you to nod your head, keep listening. Look, you're not the only one that's been facing this challenge. Face, finding new board members to serve on a board is not only one of the most important responsibilities of an association of nonprofit board of directors. It's also one of the most challenging. In fact, roughly 80% of nonprofits are actively recruiting between one and six board members, according to a most recent uh, study, leading with intent done by BoardSource. In addition, 58% of nonprofit leaders say the process of recruiting member, uh, new board members is difficult. That's because it's not about finding people to fill seats, it's about finding the right people, in fact. We've also heard from board members of, of nonprofits, large and small. They've asked us, with a few board members doing all of the work, how can you get all of the board members to participate? And how can you engage the entire board as well? The boards of staff-led organizations don't fare much better either. Daring to Lead 2011 produced a uh, report by the Meyer Foundation and Compass Point that found that organizations run by staff, only 20% of the executive directors surveyed reported believing, being very satisfied with their boards, with 48% being only somewhat satisfied. You see, at the heart of it, nonprofit boards need to get smart about understanding what motivates people to volunteer their leadership skills, and most importantly, why they say no. The complexity and speed of life today makes it more difficult for people to give their time or make it a priority to serve on a board. It's a pretty big commitment that requires a lot of responsibility. It's not just showing up for a few meetings. It's about engaged, being engaged, serving and doing what's right for the organization. 
And adding to the recruiting challenge is the fact that people don't typically serve on boards as long as they have in the past. Part of the reason for that is, is term limits. A recent National Association of Corporate uh, Directors nonprofit uh, governance uh, survey found that nearly two thirds of nonprofits have term limits. However, it is also impacted by people prioritizing their time, many willing to serve, but not for multiple terms. And that can be a positive development in that, that the organization is always bringing in fresh perspectives and ideas. However, it also leads to greater turnover. This is, of course, adds to the recruiting challenge. Further, it leads to more overall inexperience on the board as well. What you might gain in a different perspective, you might also lose in experience. Now, the most successful organizations seek out the most talented board members rather than just letting candidates come to them. However, in reality, many boards are just passive about identifying and recruiting uh, people to serve. They might simply send out a call for nominations and hope for great candidates to respond. Or they wait until the last minute and recruit someone they know. It's important to keep in mind great candidates are usually more than willing to serve if approached. And in many cases, people who seem reluctant to volunteer eagerly do so if asked. It's also vital for people to understand the roles they are being offered and the expectations that come with it before making the commitment to serve. Consider a simple handout called Before You Say Yes, which is a checklist to determine if the candidate understands what is required. For example, I'd ask them to fully, if they fully appreciate the time commitment and understand the fiduciary obligations of serving. Also, it asks if they have the support of their employer and if there are any conflicts of interest. Listen, if any of this sounds like a lot to master, or you may be thinking, oh yeah, but how do I put that into play? I know what it's like. In fact, it can feel very much incredibly uh, overwhelming and maybe not even possible to move from where you are uh, feeling at right now. That is begging towards choosing who you want to have on your board. But what I've found and what other members of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors have found as well is that when you focus on these core principles as the guiding path for your board discussions, you have a really big advance over boards filled with well-intentioned but in uninformed volunteers. However, there's another great yet lesser obvious uh, secret to having a, board, a better board recruitment and succession process in place. It actually comes from setting in place the processes for vetting and being selective in who joins your board. Yes, right. Most board direct directors of uh, associations, clubs, and nonprofits are comprised with individuals from different walks of life and varied professionals. They have joined because they want to contribute in a meaningful way to their profession, industry, or society in general. Some folks are also looking for networking opportunities leadership experience, or simply for social interaction. The recruiting process as a result should start with the board or nominating committee establishing criteria that outlines what the board is presently looking for in candidates. It is searching for forward link, is it searching for forward thinking people, a strategist, a candidate with certain expertise the board lacks, someone with outside or different industry perspective, representation from a certain demographic or stakeholder group, Maybe someone with certain type personality type or someone with an innovative or entrepreneurial way of thinking. Whatever the needs, the board needs to be in agreement. The North American Wholesale Lumber Association asks its six member uh, executive committee to drive uh, the nominating process. While the association sends out a call for nominations, the executive committee also looks for individuals to serve on the board or its committees, which can be a stepping stone to the board itself based on the current needs. The committee vets all the candidates that come in, develops a slate that must be approved by the membership as well. Now this multi-pronged approach is a, best, is a best practice. Putting out a call through the association meetings and events and in-house or industry publications, the website and social media sites is an effective way to reach great candidates. But the active recruiting must also be a part of the strategy. Some associations or nonprofits even appoint talent councils 
whose sole charge is to find the right people to serve on the boards as well, committees or advisory councils. These talent councils can also be used to mentor future members. And no matter what tactics are employed, it's not enough to have one conference call a year to brainstorm potential candidates. It needs to be a year-round process. Now we have to recognize that board members are volunteers, many of whom have uh, little experience with this type of position. For many board members, being in a leadership role or a management role may not come naturally as well. Now since your board is full of different people all wanting to do different things, setting up and communicating clear expectations is a good idea for all involved. Your board members should be aware of their roles and responsibilities towards each other as well as to the organization. Now by law, the board's fundamental uh, purpose is to hold a nonprofit accountable to the broader uh, community. The law offers little guidance, however, on how boards should do so beyond referring to broadly conceived duties of loyalty and care. The standard statements of rules and responsibilities offered to board members attempt to add flesh to this legal skeleton, but a job predicated on legal accountability is almost by definition not a compelling job. To ensure this accountability, boards must focus on norms and standards of minimally acceptable behavior. Trustees are tasked to prevent trouble more than promote success. This approach places board members in a position akin to that of a maligned substitute teacher. Now, do, do you understand exactly why it's so important to put focus on being more selective on candidates rather than emphasize just on finding candidates itself? The work of a board requires a specific type of dedicated person, and without that type of person on your board, a strong, capable board cannot provide sound governance and public credibility that a nonprofit needs to survive and thrive. Sadly, some of the, all of this can take one board, all it can take is one board member who can set the tone for the whole of a board in the wrong direction. Now, I can get, uh, I can get that some of these broad topics for the purpose of this video uh, can be a bit difficult to get. I, I just can't get into all of them into depth. These subjects are frankly are hour long discussions members of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors take up individually in our events and roundtable discussions. But what I can say is that even if you're slightly curious, yet nervous at the same time, just on possibly raising issues, the best place for someone like yourself is to start with honest, frank questions. Questions that quietly raise the point with prospective candidates joining your board is a, that is a rewarding and yet a serious prospect for them. Now having all this type of clarity can be hugely helpful when planning out your board succession planning. So, now that you're just a little bit clear on what the issues are and real issues around filling your next board opening, that's definitely put you in a different, in an awesome position. But there's more that there's more, that one big mistake as well that board members make, and it's this very step in the process, and it breaks my heart, frankly, because it can take years to discover this mistake, and during that time, it can cost you in so many ways between time and money and stress. And then of course, there's the opportunity uh, costs of wasted efforts you and your board make. You end up hating the experience of burning out when you're, if you're like most people, what you really want is a great board experience that allows you to make the type of impact that you want to make in the world. Listen, I've studied board members and found time and time again, the problem lies with the existing way we recruit board members. It's inefficient and ineffective, and it's time we change the approach. And it comes down to one big failing. It's a failing that happens so often because the conventional wisdom about how nonprofit boards recruit is just flat wrong. It comes down to the single most important consideration your board must make, and that decision is not about how you're going to go, go about getting your next board member. It's actually in shifting the thinking of board members away from a mentality of scarcity towards that of plenty. It's occurred to me that much of the problem has to do with the mindset, actually. 
What are the benefits and assumptions you are making about recruiting new board members? These assumptions are one of the biggest challenges executives and board members face. I often see how holding one of these, uh, one or more of these beliefs, even if supported by some experience, makes recruiting feel difficult. What's more, the challenge of recruiting better lies again in the paradox of substitute teaching, as I mentioned earlier. The teacher who all educates children actually stands a better chance of keeping order than the uh, teacher required only to keep order. Similarly, the board that is expected to improve organizational performance also stands a better chance of ensuring accountability. By focusing primarily on accountability, we have created a job without a compelling purpose. As a result, board members become disengaged. And the more disengaged they are, the less likely trustees are to ensure accountability. The very reason we created boards in the first place. By asking for a little, well, we get, a little, we get even less. When I founded the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors, which gathered support from around the world, I realized that the single biggest mistake boards were making was that they weren't able to ask questions intelligently of themselves and of candidates so as to set the tone as to what was to be expected by all concerned. So I embarked upon the single biggest project of my life, interviewing board members from all over while we conducted my own research as well. The combination of this search was outlining for the very first time the process for making that single most important consideration board members must make. How can, we, how can nonprofits boards find great candidates without sacrificing the quality, commitment, and dedication needed to achieve their mission? And that is the subject of a book by the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors, 20 Questions to Vet, Recruit, and Retain New Board Members. Now, what I want to do right here, right now, today, because you've taken the time to go through this assessment and to listen to this video, is I want to encourage you to learn more about how you can get your copy of this quick reference guide. And the best part of it is that if you click the link below, you'll learn about a special free offer on the next page. We simply just cannot cover everything there is to know on this subject in this video. So if you've ever felt that just maybe just you and your board experience could be better, but you've been afraid to take the leap and screw up, this book is for you. You're going to find that the meticulously tested step-by-step -step process outlined in this resource is easy to follow. You're going to find it practically, practical, easy, and follow with the advice that's outlined in the book as well. Despite being a result of hundreds of hours of interviews and my own experience, this entire process has been designed to minimize your risk of failure and losing time, uh, money up, up front. And this counterintuitive uh, unique method, coupled with the practical advice, will give you clarity on how to quickly diagnose the source of your board's problems and get you unstuck. Plus, in addition to this book, I'm also going to hook you up with an additional free book on improving board dynamics, which is also a critical element in improving your governance and most importantly, heading off challenges before they become their greatest roadblocks to retaining board members, establishing a fit and establishing a collaborative culture. And to sweeten the pot, We'll even throw in a secret uh, of our top uh, 10 listings of exactly where you can source out extremely dedicated and professional board members ready to commit to your organization. So, all you need to do is to take advantage of the special one-time special offer is to simply click on the button below on this page. You can learn more about the book, the free book on uh, board dynamics, and the audio version as well, which will be there. So go ahead and do this right now. Just click on the button uh, of this page and I'll see you on the other side in minutes from this very moment itself.